hush puppy gang defrauded 1,926,400 people and made 168 billion naira. That's according to the Dubai police. They, in the United Arab Emirates, they revealed how they arrested the Nigerian Instagram celebrity Ramon Abbas, better known as Hush Puppy. In a video released on its official Twitter handle on Thursday, the Middle East police said a special team had been tracking the suspect and his gang's activities on social media for about four months. No fewer than 1,926,400 people from different parts of the world were also said to have fallen victim of the suspect. Against the police, according to the police rather, 13 luxury cars estimated at 35 million dirham, that's about 3.7 billion naira, were recovered from the house where they were arrested. The Dubai police said the operation leading to the arrest was dubbed Fox Hunt 2. Rukeme Agwai, security engineer at Checkpoint Software Technology, says that there is a growing trend in these type of internet fraud stars leaving these larger than life lifestyles and running the risk of getting caught. He joins us now to make sense of this latest development. He's also a security expert. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Pleasure to be here. All right, uh, what is your, you said, uh, let's, let's take, look at the figures, 168 billion naira fraud over the years. How did this go unnoticed in a world of high-speed technology? Well, that's a lot of money. Um, and we feel that if you have that uh, access to that amount of resources, you um, he will be able to uh, get uh, enough evasion techniques to detect being traced and detect being um, uh, notified. Um, but that's, you should understand that uh, there's one thing being aware that um, someone is actually committing this kind of crime. There's another thing, having enough evidence to be able to um, arrest, um, carry out the arrest and um, carry out uh, investigation to um, put um, such individuals behind bars. So, um, you know, according to the reports um, from the um, Dubai team, they were able to carry out a thorough investigation that lasted over um, for a couple of months before they were able to uh, carry out the arrest. So, um, it's not about just identifying or knowing that um, this person actually um, stole this money or this amount of money. It's also having that enough evidence to be able to um, put the person behind books. Yeah, but, but just so uh, we're clear, he has been arrested but not found guilty as of today of the crimes that the police are saying he committed. Yes. Okay. Of course. So it's all it's um, it's up to the justice system to um, prove his um, to prove Guilt his uh, innocence, uh, but it's all about gathering enough evidence, and um, that's why it usually takes. It's not usually an immediate process. Um, I remember there was a time he was under the radar of the EFCC, and that case seems to be wobbling along. And now, in less than five months, the police in Dubai were able to come together and carry out this arrest, where our own um, intelligence agency seemed to have failed. What, what, what do you make of that? Well, I can't comment much about um, how the investigation um, procedures for our own intelligence agencies. Uh, but what, what I can say is that um, uh, we need to work more with um, international committee and also work more with um, um, other independent security bodies in, in the area to, to, to make sure that this kind of crimes don't go unpunished. How can everyday people uh, protect themselves from becoming victims? Well, uh, especially in this period of um, the pandemic where a lot of people are working from home, um, there needs to be a more um, cyber security awareness. Um, it's individuals now need to take more responsibility upon themselves uh, to ensure that um, any kind of connection, any kind of internet connection that they're having is through a secured means. So um, cyber security awareness should be done, um, uh, ensuring that um, whatever you're 
purchasing online e-commerce is done in a secured matter, manner. Um, always because it's, it more has to be an individual process now. Um, you need to be more aware about the emails you're receiving, um, learn how to cross-check all the links you are going to be adding, um, checking or clicking on to try and prevent from any kind of phishing campaign that might be done towards you. Uh, before I let you go, there is this um, revelation from that investigation that they clone um, website, official website, and try to use it to uh, dupe people. How can institutions, organizations like banks and uh, um, others, uh, protect themselves from such infiltration? Yeah, so that's, that's one of the things we do at Checkpoint. We try to advise our customers to have a holistic approach towards security. What most organizations usually do is they just concentrate on one side of security and they leave themselves um, exposed in different areas, like from their website or from their phones or from uh, their cloud environment. And we know that now everybody's working from home, everybody's connected through different means. So we advise organizations to have a security, have a holistic security approach in terms of um, providing security. So you don't provide security only for the perimeter, that's what we call the perimeter that is inside your headquarters alone. Always provide security for um, virtual um, private network communication, provide security for your mobile devices, for your staff, and also for your customers. Also, um, um, ensure that you are um, employing best practices in terms of um, um, database management and database security. Also, endpoint that's your um, endpoint device security on your mobile devices and on, also at your laptops. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Rukome, Rukome Agwai, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you yes. so much right. for joining right. us. Yeah, glad to be with you. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. You too.